Hi, my name is Sariba. I am Catwoman, your host for Spooky Fest. Spooky Fest. Yo, today we're going to be talking about my favorite childhood movie, The Ring. Um, it's not my favorite. It was not the best. And it was actually terrifying. I I don't know what it is about me being, when I was younger. And I loved scary things. I love to get scared. Like, what is it? Like, what is wrong with me? Seriously. <laughs> but here we're going to talk about The Ring. Okay, I am going to be re-watching this movie today. And... Before I rewatch the movie, I'm just going to tell you guys some of the things that had me absolutely terrified about this movie. Before we get into the video, I would love it if you guys would please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Um, if you don't want to like this video and it, it gets saved to your liked video, just dislike the video. That also helps the algorithm comment something that you liked or didn't like about the movie The Ring and let's go. By the way, I know you get this a lot being on YouTube, but please do subscribe to my channel. It actually helps your, you are important to me. Okay, so in this movie, The Ring, all I remember before I watch this, all I remember is this being so scared. My, you know what actually made this movie scarier? My siblings and their commentary. They just get, they, they, they were the best at acting scared to make me scared. Like, like, oh my gosh, I think something's coming, something's coming. Oh my gosh. Like, I didn't want to sit on the couch that, that was like, it's back to the hallway. Like, I had to sit somewhere in the corner and watch this movie tucked in around my blanket that I brought from my room to the living room. We haven't seen it before. The ring is kind of like the grudge. It's about a well. Like, all I remember is this person watching TV and then water coming out of her TV screen and then the grudge crawling out of the well on the TV. It's like a camera filming a well and she's crawling out of the well and she's like a ghost girl, like pale skin, really skinny. It's like she fell in there. As you're watching this tape on your TV, she's crawling closer and closer to the TV from the well. And then, boom, your TV starts leaking water and then static. And then she comes out the TV. I would be terrified. But I also would be like that parody of this movie, that girl who tried to fight her and she did fight her. Yeah, I'm going to insert a clip right here because that had me rolling. This was like the best parody scene ever because like after watching that movie during your childhood you're like dang dang i should that i shouldn't have been scared watching it the first time i should have been more like huh like fight me then fight me then like anyways continuing so after she comes out of the tv she starts to haunt you so you don't want to get this tape you don't want this to pop up on your tv screen and like because if it possible, your TV screen's happening to you. And then the thing that kind of scared me the most when I was a child is that, like, thinking that because I'm watching the movie that she's going to haunt me, too, because she's on my TV screen and everyone in the movie that she ended up on their TV stream screen ended up getting killed by her. So that was kind of really, like, terrifying for me as a child. Um... So I'm going to get into this and I'm going to watch this movie. You can stream this movie on... Ooh, I'm going to put some information in the description box on where you can stream this movie. But I'm most likely going to be streaming it on an app that I can't tell you about. I'm, I want to have a monetized YouTube channel, you know? You feel me? Okay. So I will be back after watching the movie and I'm going to give a new commentary on how I feel about it versus when I watched it when I was a child, okay? All right. Approximately 10 hours later. After watching the movie The Ring, I watched The Ring 1, 2, and 3. The Ring 3 is not actually called The Ring 3, it's called 
rings the rings yeah weird i know after watching the first one over i realized that when i was a child like i was too scared to actually watch the movie that i only remember the beginning and the end of the movie don't remember anything from the middle it's like i cut the whole thing out of my childhood like i was too terrified to remember like it's crazy after watching the first one i i'm not actually scared of the movie i love mystery movies and this is part of the reason why i feel like because when you're young and you're like in around ages seven eight nine the, that's like everything you learn at that time you carry with you the rest of your life i'm literally 25 and watching this movie over i realized why i like the type of movies that i like because this intrigued me so much it had an impact on me even though it was like a regular random scary movie i feel like this film was filmed very creatively like the cut scenes from flipping from one scene to another that's like how i like to direct and film i like to cut from one scene to another i've been practicing i haven't really showed much of my work aside from the spooky fest trailer that i did if you didn't see the intro you can watch that that's a little snippet of me trying to create a film a short film um i'm new to this a lot of the film tactics that i imp implement to my film i've seen in this film and it's like crazy how much of an impact that had on me i really like the style of filming where you just have little cut scenes that make no sense but it adds up at the end like i love the mystery and you don't know where it's going like this scene where and the phone rings and then it shows her face then it shows the phone it zooms in on the phone and it goes back to her then it's like it just builds the suspense getting different angles that's what i like usually movies nowadays they're so predictive and this is like unpredictable like i couldn't remember what happened even though i remembered the ending i didn't remember like certain scenes until i was watching them if that makes sense i really like how this was filmed i like the the vintage like i don't know i don't know what it is i just miss this version style of filming nowadays they try to make it so realistic like some scenes in this movie was so like all right that didn't really happen but the scenes that were unrealistic they were the moments where the person that was like cursed by watching the film like it's when they started bugging out when they were hallucinating those those parts were like all right that's not really happening like how did they end up in a whole different room so things like that are in there i like the mystery it like continues from the beginning to the like every single movie they keep the mystery going it's like you don't know where it's gonna lead to like you're not sure if the person that you're watching is gonna end up making it through like how are they gonna possibly get out of this like you want them to get out of this situation so bad that you're just like all right is that a clue is that a clue is this a clue like it's like they're just finding different clues it's such a like scooby-doo ghost mystery like it's weird i know i'm a weirdo i'm like a 90s baby so of course i'm gonna bring up scooby-doo after watching the first film the first film and the second film are more connected because it's the same main characters in there and it shifts from the the girl with the blonde hair who plays rachel keller to her son from there it like it changes like the main perspective it pushes her to a secondary character and like the son is like the main problem here like she's safe like everything is fine like you think everything is fine but it's not it's like there's still more to the mystery that she hasn't unsolved yet when i was watching this with my sister and my siblings i remember my sister cracking jokes on how creepy the the son was in the first movie it's so funny like it's not it's not funny it's not funny because you know there's people but it's like, he just looked like an adult in a little person. Like, I don't know, like, it's not funny. It's not funny because there's people out there that's actually like fully grown, but like they didn't really fully grow. 
so i'm not making fun of anyone like that but it's just like he seems like he has an old soul that's what's the funny part it's like you know when you see a young kid who has an old soul and it's like that's a grown man that's not a little boy <laughs> so yeah my sister was just cracking jokes on how like the son is just being weird before he even watched the film in the third part which is the rings three that movie it's like kind of connected because it's the same film it's the same girl samara morgan she's the girl from the well it's all the same concept but it's different characters because of course the same thing is happening to other people so it's like it seems like a chain movie where it can keep on going and stop it it just uh, you just have to watch the movie i don't want to spoil too much but i mean like it makes sure that you know that they might make another movie at the end and they have came through once again i really like how mysterious the movie is and you think like you understand where it's going but then it's not headed in that direction anymore the new movie that just recently came out the last ring movie the rings i don't know about that one because i don't really like how it ends like i understand that it ends in a way where they can make another movie but it seems like they didn't know where to take it it's showing different types of people and how they would handle this situation throughout the movie I, I don't know i feel like i don't like the airplane scene in the beginning because it was headed the right direction but then how can she force all those people to watch the tape like like i don't know how she forced all those people on the plane and they didn't do a follow-up on what happened like how are you gonna show us that scene but you're not gonna show us what happened to all those people after they watched like just like a little clip like of each person like seeing her like i wonder what their vibe is like you could do another movie about that airplane just the airplane itself just the whole beginning scene of the third movie you see you can build off of this movie which is why it's a great film great films have foundation and then you can build it up it's like you're telling a story but this story even though it's not a real story it's like so they they implement like realistic things that make you feel like this can actually happen like can this actually like they they show the perspective of the people who don't believe it in the movie so it's just like dang there's that that's that that's me right there i'm not gonna believe none of this i'm not gonna believe i go something's gonna happen to me from watching that film like it's a good practical joke until you need to find someone to watch the film for you but thank you guys for clicking on this video i rate this movie a good smack dab nine out of ten the reason why I say 9 out of 10 is because it didn't end the way I thought it was going to end. And I'm very good at guessing movies. But you know, that's bias. That's bias. They deserve a 10. But they don't really deserve a 10 with that ending. I don't know. They left us with a cliffhanger, but they didn't leave us with enough details. But that's kind of the juicy part of a movie. Like, you want to leave people questioning so that when you come out with another movie, they want to know what happened. So you definitely got those last watchers on your next movie. But that's like the capitalist view, the narcissist view, narcissistic, capitalistic view. But yeah, what do you call someone who's a narcissist but a capitalist? Hmm. I wonder. I don't know. I don't know what they call that, but that's what that just sounded like. So let me stop. Yeah.